Hey, Andy, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, I'm seeing a black uh, screen. All right, I've got my for your open. camera. And for some reason, the audio is being piped through. Here we go. Audio input it should be my yeah. Right now my camera doesn't appear to be on. <laughs> Let me try turning it off and back on again. I know you have a call. So for those of you joining us on YouTube and uh, our Facebook Live page, Andy and I are doing an experiment. And what's data science without experiments? Right, Andy? So true. So. How's my your, audio, uh, Frank? Your audio is it? awesome. I don't know what's oh, good. going on okay. camera. Good to hear. All right. I've turned my camera on manually uh, using the app that came with it. So the software that we're explaining for folks and for you, Andy, uh, so I want to bring our listeners into this. Um, Data Driven started three years ago, uh, plus or minus a few weeks. We, we wanted to hold off on the celebrations um, for a number of reasons. Um, and um, we originally envisioned this show to be kind of a video podcast. So technology and costs have come down that uh, if assuming Andy gets his camera going <laughs> we will be able to do there we go I see you I am here I found the settings button awesome um, so this is good this is good um, so we have the ability now to uh, kind of do something um, more along the lines of what we originally envisioned so as awesome as you may think the show has been, uh, we actually had even we have even grander plans. So um, this is just an experiment. Uh, might even put this live on the feed as kind of like a call it a data point. How about that, Andy? I like it. I like that a yes. lot. Because the advantage is that because I'm using a product called Restream that I can pipe to different uh, uh, outputs. So this is actually going to Frank's World TV YouTube channel, uh, our Facebook Live feed, and because of the magic of automation, uh, this is also going to be, um, uh, I'm actually going to, once this ends, we'll see, uh, that it should pick up the, um, the video feed from Facebook and then pipe that um, into an MP3 file, which should be ready for upload to the feed. So again, it's data science, right, Andy? <laughs> it's data magic. Data magic. Data magic. So, uh, it's not science. Uh, if it, if we, you know, it, it, I, I tell that to customers a lot. Like, you know, it's okay to fail because it's called data science. It's not data mm -hmm. perfection. Um, so true. you know, and and science calling it science lets you say, well, it failed, but you know, we weren't sure it was going to work. So it's kind of a. <laughs> uh, so how's it going? I know you have a call in like five minutes, but. Yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm waiting on uh, on someone, and if they um, if they don't show up, that's that's okay. They're busy. It's a cool. regular call with uh, with someone who subcontracts with me, and he's awesome. Oh, okay. But cool. he is a data scientist as well, and he sometimes gets distracted, heads down, and that's why you pinged me about five minutes till the call, and I was like, well, I got a call in five minutes, but let's do it. <laughs> I was upstairs <laughs> drinking coffee. <laughs> When I messaged you, and um, I'm glad you did. This is yeah. cool. I like this, Frank. This is you're right. This is our vision. That's why um, we registered DataDriven.tv so well, we there, could. There's do another reason exactly. we want to register. There's, right. There's a reason why we registered right. .tv, but we, there's a, the, the real reason we didn't do .com is because it was taken. So. Well, there was that. <laughs> Full transparency. Minor but inconvenience. Minor inconvenience. I turned it into a potential opportunity to make it into a video podcast. but the You uh, did. And, and look, here we are. So don't give up on your dreams, kids. That's right. Um, no, things are, things are going good here today, Frank. A, l a little busy. It's... Um, it's an interesting time to be an entrepreneur, right? Um, in technology, it's it's usually feast or famine, um, but there's a lot of factors kind of weighing in, um, right. you know, on, on all of that today. Um, I think 2020 has been that kind of year where it's just been, you know, one thing after after another. But um, Frank, you and I are both people of uh, of faith. 
Right. And what I say when it's good times and bad times is, you know, we're in God's hands. And a lot of people don't like us mixing that kind of stuff in. But right. I'm, well, I'm different you know that what? way. If you are if you don't believe in God, then, you know, you can take the stoic approaches. You can't do anything and, about it anyway. I mean. Well, and we had, you know, we had, uh, I remember um, a couple of people that we interviewed uh, mm -hmm. brought that up, brought up the stoic approach. Brent Ozar stands out. Right. Um, right, right. May have been the last one. So, and, yeah. And then Bob so, Ward spoke a lot of, about his faith. Right, at, right. At the end of it, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I still believe there's room for. Well, you know, I mean, to hold their there's own something. Music. There's something I read. It might have been from Taleb. It wasn't in one of his books. It might have been like a tweet or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that wars and plagues happen so frequently in human history, yet we're still surprised when they happen. Yeah. And that kind of, that kind of stuck with me. And, and, you know, if, if you are a person of faith, Hey man, that's cool. If you're not, that's cool too. Uh, we all have to live on the same planet. Uh, we absolutely uh, do. Yeah. Until Mars is an option, then we'll share two. Um, <laughs> but, um, um, I mean, it, you know, as someone, you know, you all know, I mean, I don't know, not everyone knows, but you know, I, I, was at the World Trade Center. Got it. I had PTSD, uh, and one of the lasting legacies is of PTSD is kind of the um, the overreaction to stress. Yeah. Now, yeah. to say the 2020 has been a stressful year, both for family reasons and kind of uh, outside, yep. this is an understatement. And um, you know, I, you know, I it. It's 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 very easy to cower and kind of like just zone out, and I've done that. Like you, you can figure out when that happened. When if you look at the blog, when kind of the post kind of dipped, <laughs> as well as the podcast when we didn't record. Um, right. But kind of, I had this moment of of clarity that you know, reading reading, uh, I think it was you know about stoicism. It was the really good book called "The Obstacle Is the Way." Yeah, and. You know, there are two things in this world, right? There's one way to look at it. I'm paraphrasing, but basically things you can control and things you can't. Yep. So things you can control, well, you know, laying in bed all day, <laughs> it's not going to fix it. Right. Um, and things you can't control, you can't do anything about it. So at some point, mm -hmm. I kind of had this thought that how can I make this how can I be a better person despite all this? How can I be a better father? How can I be a better um, technologist? How can I be a better like human being just in general, right? Because, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've i listened to a lot of Tony Robbins over the years and some people like him, some people hate him. But one of the things he says is that the quality of your life is largely determined by the questions you ask yourself. Hmm. And we're really off topic here. Um, That's but, okay. Um, we're, we live in a very odd year. But I mean, you know, if you ask yourself constantly, why is this happening or why is this being allowed to happen by, you know, mm -hmm. uh, some divine entity, yeah. you, you're going to get answers that lead, I think, to despair. But if you ask yourself questions of how can I use this to be a better person? What can I learn from this? Um you're going to put your head in a better place. Now I'm not saying that's going to magically solve everything, but honestly, yeah. if, if falling apart, isn't going to help anyone. It's, actually it, it's interesting. The, uh, where, you know, where the Euler's overlap uh, yeah. between stoicism and, and faith and where they don't. Right. And I think it's, you know, it's, it makes, it's important distinctions. And I think there's different flavors of both. Stoicism is it or is it a Venn diagram? Well, I think this would, I, you could probably get away with a Venn on this one. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, Most, actually, since we're doing experiments, let me try this. Let me try this. Yeah, I want to try this. yeah do your uh, pen thing. I see your pen. Yep, I got my pen. <laughs> and uh, let me make sure customer notes. I had a huge customer engagement yesterday, which is why my LinkedIn live feed yesterday was kind of like, 
it was short because I had to pick up the one of the kids from daycare. But um, oh, okay, I was <laughs> my brain was pretty much melted. I, I missed well. it, Frank. And and while <laughs> you're bringing that up, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if the, our listeners know it or not, but I've been doing Twitch. Yes. Uh, oh, and did you see that screenshot I sent you? I, I think I did. Well, you All send right. me a bunch, Frank. <laughs> Let me finish this thought. I send you, I send you a lot of stuff. Poor Andy. Let me scroll up. The one I think I said the who's it's it's not the profile one, is it? Um, no. Let me finish this. There's one of you on. All right. There's another of you on live. There you are. All right. Your data shirt. I want to do a joke. Okay, do a joke. So this I is. I think you're right. I think it is V E N M. No, no. I spelled it. I spelled it wrong because uh, you'll see. Okay. Uh, bad movies. <laughs> Vin Diesel. It's a joke. I don't know. Infographic uh, humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Infographic humor. But it is, it is, it is actually Ven, and I think it's yes. two ends. Um, but this is cool. So we can actually do. Uh, we can go further <laughs> than the original vision. In terms of. Um, uh, you know, doing architectures and stuff. Because when you talk about data engineering aspect, especially, and some of the more esoteric kind of um, mathematical concepts around um, yeah. uh, data science and AI, I think having that whiteboard will be very helpful. Absolutely. And it's nothing yeah. fancy. I mean, it's like it's like literally the cheapest uh, Wacom tablet you can get. And and here's a, here's a good example. Let, I can bring it back now. I can bring it back full circle. Bring it back. Um, is I did a um, uh, just before I switched to my new role as an MTC architect, we did an architecture design session with some company that was a customer of mine, and we were trying to architect something um, on a virtual whiteboard because we're all virtual, and I really struggled to draw it with the mouse, and I was oh, already gosh, stressed yeah, out. Hard. Well, and it's not you. It's not it, it, the sample rate on the mouse is like twenty to forty times per second, and the sample rate on a pen on the stylus system, at least in Windows, is uh, one hundred and twenty. So it's oh, not okay. it's not you. It's it's okay. literally the technology. Um, gotcha. So for those that don't know, I was a tablet PC MVP prior to joining Microsoft. And for those you don't that's know, why you know PC, these things. Frank. That's why I know these things. For those of you who don't know, tablet PC was a platform that prior to the iPad, but I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to leave the negativity there. So, so, so to bring it back together, I kind of, I was really, I, fortunately the customer was happy, but I was not happy with how I performed. And I was kind of like, Oh my God, this is my new job. And you know, I wasn't still had in transition, but I basically was kind of like a practice run. And I felt like didn't quite, I felt like I didn't do my best. So I kind of, you know, I had two options here, right? I can, you know, I kind of thought about that, that stoic kind of mentality of, um, what can I do to be better? Right. Right. It's not a character flaw. It's just, no, it was your first time out. Yeah. And, um, so I was like, well, you know, what I really needed was if I could draw the diagram, because when you're, when you're on a webcam and you're kind of like with a customer and you can't read the room like you normally can, and you're struggling to draw with the mouse. <laughs> so I was like, all right, how can I make that experience better? So then I, I was like, well, you know, um, look for, I'm like, well, I, I need to write on thing. And well, you know, um, don't want to buy a whole new, like, you know, monitor thing, but you know, for like 40 bucks, I was able to get this, this Wacom tablet and I, it's nice. been transformative. Um, you know, so, and I spent a lot of time, I, I, I like to doodle sometimes. So like I, I got used to it. So I spent some time practicing it. So now you get to see really bad jokes on, on now this. So, um, but I think that's just for me that that kind of was like, you know, I was stressed out. And, you know, one of the advantages of having kind of dealt with the af the longer term after effects of PTSD is you, you have this ability to kind of stop and be self-aware mindfulness, I guess, or self-aware and like, all right, why am I feeling this way? Right. Yeah. And I actually talked about this on another podcast. Um uh, it's called the Rad Dad Podcast. I'll put a link in the show notes okay. uh, where we talk about that, how like, you know, um, that was kind of like, it helps me be a better dad. Now, my kids may have a different opinion of that, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, you know, 
the context was like, you know, you want to yell at the kids because, you know, it's like 30 minutes into they were supposed to get dressed and they still don't have their socks on. You know what I mean? Right. So you kind of have that moment of like before you're about to yell, I kind of take a deep breath. I'm like, all right, focus, you know, and that's yeah. kind of like it's it's become like a habit now. And I'm sure many people will point out the times when I didn't do it. But, you know, just like AI, just like data science, 80, 90 percent model. Eh, it's good enough for deployment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are you worried about overfitting Frank as a dad? Oh, I hadn't thought of that one. Hmm. That would be a good book series, Philosophy and Data Science. That, that could work. That. Somebody should write and, that. And you know, just to throw this into the mix, mm -hmm. uh, for your kids, you're their best and worst example of a dad. This is true. Simultaneously. So, this is true. you know, I, um, I've, I had this experience being a dad where I'm, you know, I was uh, a dad way too young, uh, two daughters who are awesome. And um, then I, I became a dad again. I have three, three children, two sons and another daughter. And what I learned going through that experience of, you know, two sets uh, of children is that it's a vicious trap. That, that it really is. You will, if you think about, you know, how good of a dad you are and the time you're not spending, especially if you work and most dads work. Right. Um, you know, it's, there's this. This whole thing, I, I should be spending more time with my kids. And the truth is, yes, probably, probably most dads should be spending more time with their kids. But um, the second time around, I have spent more time with my kids. I still feel guilty. Yeah, that was the first time I heard that, you know, you, you know, you, you. What's interesting was, and I go into detail about this story. I think I shared this with you, not on the podcast, but like. My younger, I'll give the two minute version. My younger son gets in the car after I pick him up from school one day and he, he's like upset. He goes, oh, they want us to learn an instrument. And I'm like, like anyone has time for that. And I turned to him. I was like, really? <laughs> I was like, look, and I, I, I gave him my stump speech, which I'll spare the audience, but kind of like, um, you know, Everyone on this planet has the same 24 hours in a day. That's right. Of all the things, talent, money, resources, anything, the only thing that's evenly distributed in our existence is time. Bill Gates, Warren Buffett have the same amount of time as the poorest people in the world. It's really about how you manage that time. Now, yes, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett can pay people to do errands like, you know, groceries, um, pick up the dry cleaning, that sort of thing. Because what they really what they really have learned is to optimize their time. And I kind of went on this thing in a way that a 10 year old would understand would, would understand it. You know, and then months later, and I I just saw him roll his eyes and kind of like yeah, I, I was a kid too. Like I think that's what kids don't really understand. Like I was a kid too. Like I know I know this is a game. So so like he he um I read a report something he read and it was something like, you know, what's, what did, what's a lesson you learned recently? And it was all about like, everyone has the same time, like almost verbatim my speech, which I've spared the audience. You can go to the, um, the rad dad podcast, kind of hear the whole kind of thing. Very cool, Frank. But, um, but yeah, so, I mean, it's, you know, um, I'm excited to have the show. We're 251 episodes in. This is, I guess, 252, three years. Um, let me pull up the math here calendar um 252 divided by three is 84 shows per year not bad not bad i was hoping we hit 300 to be honest with you yeah well it's not just you frank i mean it's uh you you mentioned earlier that we didn't record because the just just stuff going on um it's been that way here too i mean i've been i've been slammed i've been um you know i've been writing uh, a little more i've Last time I had a book come out was in 2017, and had three come out that year. I thought you had four it. come out that year. Maybe, may, there may have been one that slipped over from 20. Because I was teasing you that like you've been slacking, because yeah. you know I have been. Well, it's it's accurate. Just, I have been four books in a year, dude. Cut yourself a little slack. You're, I've you're, got. <laughs> uh, well, it depends too, right? Because right. if it's a rewrite or a new edition or something Ooh, like that. Good point. 
Good That's point. not nearly as much work as writing from scratch. The one book I wrote was a Silverlight book. And one day I will expound upon what happened. Uh, but let's just say that when the second edition was coming out, this was just before the Silverlight Apocalypse, um, my employer at the time, which was not Microsoft, decided that, hey, you work for us, so everything intellectually you produce is ours. So yeah, we'll get, which makes we'll, perfect sense. We'll, we'll get the royalties make. of it. And I'm like, uh, I do this on my own computer on my own time. And yeah. honestly, <laughs> you, you, writing a book is, you don't do it for the money. And, um, you know, and they were like, well, here's what we'll do. The second edition will take the royalties from, and then we'll give you some. And <laughs> you can keep the royalties you already have on the existing book, which I thought was nice because I'd only worked there like three months and the book had been out seven months and so what i did was after some very tense negotiations with the owners and founders of, of said uh company i basically called my publisher said i'm out don't want to yeah. do it and um which i don't know i told them i was like hey i know you have your policy and i know you're not going to change your mind but here's the unintended consequence i canceled mm. everything i was supposed to do a plural site course because they they basically said we you know and i'm like don't want that. Don't want now. I'm like, I'm out. And I yeah. said, like, this is what you're doing. So instead of getting my name out there and your, this company's name out there, essentially what you're doing is you're squashing any kind of thing. Now I know rationally why they did that, but you know, the, the problem I had was they wanted me to see their point of view, but mm. they didn't, wouldn't even entertain my point of view. But, well, you know, Frank, I own a company. Right. And yep. I've got people that are associated with me here. Mm -hmm. And I find that kind of thinking very short sighted and it fosters bad will. Totally. Um, because even though you're not mentioning them by name, um, folks are know, clever. They can figure it out. They, they could. <laughs> if, if only there was some site where all of your previous employees were linked in to your profile. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. No, no, I don't. I don't wish them bad will. Like, I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, they had their point of view. My my issue was like, there was another company in Richmond that I almost worked for, but they wouldn't work with me on. I mean, honestly, I wanted. <laughs> again, this is not a Kvetch session. I swear. And for those of you who don't know, I'm from New York, right? Uh, Kvetch is a. I think it's a Yiddish term for complain. Um, it maybe you know what that means. Maybe you know what. It, Anyway, so this is not a Kvetch session, but, um, you know, they wanted me to work for them. I wasn't happy where I was. Again, you could probably figure out what company this was. And there was a lot going on in my life. My dad was sick. He died. And, like, so there was a lot going on. Yeah. And I basically said, all right, I understand that I make X amount more than what you typically pay. And, you know, they came to me with an offer. And I said, tell you what, I'll meet you halfway. And they're like, no, that's not our policy. Okay, let me repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I am today. And this is where you want me to be. Right. I'm not happy. I want to leave. But I'm not going to be happy anywhere where I have to take that much of a pay cut. Yeah. But I'm willing to meet you halfway. And I know that it was ultimately, we're not talking about a massive sum of money here. It wasn't like, right. you know, I mean, it wasn't a lot of money, but it was enough to be like, no. <laughs> now, yeah. fortunately for me, uh, I met my wife uh, who lived in Northern Virginia and I, I left Richmond, although I do miss Midlow. Midlow was an awesome place to live. Um, although it's crowded now, my God, we were there like last summer. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's um, it looks like my North oldest Jersey daughter now. lives there. Yeah, it's it's gotten crazy busy. Looks, yeah, it looks like North Jersey, um, but um, but cleaner and newer. Um, no disrespect <laughs> to North Jersey, but um, I don't know where we were going with this. But I mean, I mean, but but here's the thing. This is why this turned me off in both cases, and I think yeah. this gets into something that my current boss or mega boss. Um, you know, Sacha Nadella, he talks about empathy, right? He talks about yes. empathy a lot. And if you don't know kind of the context of talking about empathy, it sounds very touchy-feely, kind of like, um, okay. But yeah, empathy is 
not just a touchy feely concept. It's actually um, uh, there's a really good book. I listened to the audio book. Uh, Never split the difference. Yep. And he calls it Chris Voss, I think, is the author, and he calls yep. it tactical empathy. Mm-hmm. Which I thought, if you, I can't recommend that book enough because it's 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 awesome. And I've tried tried some of the techniques, mm-hmm. and you know that there was somebody who was selling a course, and it was like two three thousand dollars or some kind of mentoring thing. And I'm I, I don't want to name anyone, but I'm like right. I really want to do it, but right, I just couldn't justify the cost at the time. And I'm just for fun. I'm like, I knew I wasn't going to do it, but I was like, I, I said to this person, I said, you know, basically one of the things that um, uh, that's in the book is, you know, you, you answer with how am I supposed to do that? Yes. And I just did it as an experiment and it worked because this person changed the payment plan. So it went from like in one yeah. lump sum to like, then there was like a monthly thing. I still didn't do it because I knew I just didn't have the time to commit to it. But I mean, it's just amazing. So I can't recommend that book enough. I think he even has now a class on, um, like a whole thing on masterclass.com where he talks about the art of negotiating. Yeah. So this guy knows his stuff. He was a hostage negotiator for the FBI for like 20 years. So. Yeah, and, yeah. And he is, he's awesome, and the book is awesome. Yeah, and I um, would ask him to be on the show, but we know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the more I think about that, so Frank and I had a non-positive experience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How's that? When we tried we to ask it. We've hinted well, we, we tried. We went after a big fish. And, you know, Frank, I, I think I own that. I think the approach that I took was not well thought out. So it's my you, know, you swung for the fences. I can't fault you for swinging for the fences. But I think we also learned a lesson that people we listen to, we admire their podcasts. We admire their books. We admire their thoughts. We even admire their protein bars. Yes, you all are fair, clever. You can figure this out. Um, <laughs> but they may not be the awesome people that we think they are. Additionally, or they may they, have hired on awesome people. That was what I was saying. Additionally, they are also in a place where they may have hired a virtual assistant who may be a jerk. Could be. Theoretically. Hypothetically. Yes. And that's kind of what happened where we didn't get – we one, we didn't think about the gatekeepers. Two – the gatekeepers have a higher opinion of themselves than it's really warranted. Um, but I will say, um, I want to give a big shout out to an author who has been on the show recently. Did you get one? Did you get yours yet? I did. I have my book. I don't so know. this is there. awesome. Um, we got a signed book. Um, yeah. So Bob Ward was recently on the podcast. Um, since I'm posting this relatively soon, this is going to be um, um, that. Uh, probably the previous yeah. episode. He posted like on this. You know, he, he was on our show. It was an awesome show. Definitely listen to it. Um, and I kind of appreciate now how we got involved with SQL Server a little more. So, like, I'm looking yeah. I'm through the book. I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, so it's always cool to kind of know the story. But, but he was awesome. After we hung up, he goes, hey, you guys – you know, if you don't have a copy of this book, let me send you a signed copy. Send me your address. And I'm like, that was really big of him. I thought that was awesome. It was. It was very awesome of him. He's a, you know, I, I, I like we don't hang out <laughs> or anything, but <clears throat> I, I'd known about Bob Ward for, for years and, you know, seen him speak a number of times at various um, past summits and, and the like. And yeah, I think you saw him at Tech Ready. Uh, yeah. earlier this year, late last year. Uh, and, February. Yeah. Okay. One yeah, of the, so, probably, if not the last, like the second to last presentation he's given publicly. Yeah, it's just, that's kind of he's the way it is. He does. Person. And he's very knowledgeable. Um, also very humble, I think, um, in the way that he, and I don't think it's a, it's, it's false humility. He is, he is just that kind of guy. And, um, See, and that, that I think that that touches on empathy, right? Because like we, it does. Not only is he an awesome guest, but we just want to work with him again. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's kind of like you know, so for this other character, we we uh, we mm-hmm. invited. Um, you know, I see his protein bars and shakes in in the store, and I'm like, I like eh, I, 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 every time. Like they're at Sam's Club, they're at Wegmans. I like reach them because, and I'm like, 
well, they're expensive. And then I'm like, <laughs> you can't see this on the podcast, but you see the hand going to touch the thing. So let's do let's yeah. do a dramatic reenactment. So so this this okay, here, here and I grab it and I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Frank. I well, you- still subscribe to the podcast. Yeah. That he, and like it pops up in my feed, and I'm like, nah, I'm not. Gonna Maybe it. later. I mean, and it's not the funny thing is because it was his handler, it wasn't. Yeah. Not be his really fault. Yeah. We so, did have some interaction with him directly. And that, that, was, yeah, and that was positive, but but I think what really soured the milk on this was the fact that he blocked you and me on Twitter. Like, yes, we didn't harass. I mean, I don't think it was him. I think it was his handler. Who I think it was his handler, which is interesting because his handler then handles his Twitter, which is, you know, yeah. I don't know, just you know, it, it's probably in the three years of podcasting, yeah. we can try to keep this on topic. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh, in the three years of podcasting, um, I ex- anticipated a lot of things. Some of them happened. That wasn't one of them. That was that was. Yeah. One. So, um, in terms of, um, you know, um, you know, I guess that kind of makes this a three-year retrospective. Um, it, it but I mean, in, terms, in terms of our numbers, here, let's be super transparent. Let's be not. Let's be what we think other people should be, which I think <laughs> might be another stoic. Thing. Um, I'm liking that. While you're pulling that up, Frank, I'll say one other thing about empathy. The um, the book I'm wrapping up right now, mm-hmm. um, it's getting ready to go to you know where the publisher takes it and does everything they need to do. And with a press, this takes a couple of months uh, for them to get it. And you know, t- between when I'm done and then there's a physical copy. Um, oh, cool. And uh, there's a section in. I'm writing on uh, some pieces about automation frameworks and i have a section in there about empathy oh actually at the introduction of it i think empathy is a big part of software What? Nope, I'm back. Everyone can see and hear me. I've got a little note down here at LinkedIn. Oh, so there's a little blooper then. That's All right, so I I need to figure out how this works. Oh, here we go. There we go. (laughs) But there's our number. So for those of you wondering. All right, now you can see it. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. I'll have to fix that in editing. Um, But basically, um, 130... We could round up, but let's just say uh, 137 and a half thousand downloads. Wow. And, um, what's really cool, you can see growth. So normally our episodes would, would tend to top out around three, four hundred. Uh, we're, we're almost to the point where it tops out at uh, 700. My goodness, that's, that's right. Um, and what's interesting, some of them go higher. And, you know, this gives me more um, stuff. So we definitely are growing. I did notice the other day that we are somehow delisted from Spotify. So um, I, How I, did I, that I, happen? I think when, so we use a, uh, this is an awesome um, service called uh, Podcast Websites, um, which we've been using. And they split up kind of their product into two parts. A podcast hosting, which is what Captivate is, right, right. And I think the URL changed. So when the URL, the old URL stopped work, I'm not sure. Oh. But they automatically handled um, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google. I don't think they automatically did Spotify. So I do need to to redo that because hmm. um, that was a big source of things. So you know, yeah. again, two ways to look at this, right? Oh my God, God we're off Spotify. Right, it's like we're getting good numbers, and we're not on Spotify. Imagine what happens when we re-add Spotify. See, nice, it's all about good honest. thinking, Frank. I love it. It's I all in your head. positivity. Yeah, I'm, and it's not, you know, it's not just playing some silly game. It really is about keeping yourself uh, motivated, right? And you know, and you and I go back and forth on this a lot because we're. It seems like you know, one of us is up, the other one's down, right? And we bounce and around normal. a lot. I think it's normal. We make um, a good team. 
So I think so. I, I do. I mean, you, you know, it's, it's, we have, it seems like we have strengths and um, each of us has strengths where the other one has weaknesses, except you don't have any weaknesses. So it's, <laughs> Oh, I assure you. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of books, um, <laughs> Facebook junkie, and I can't seem to find it. Uh-oh. Uh, no, that's around here somewhere. It's the, the Art of War. I gave it to my uh, 10-year-old to read. I saw the screenshot, or a, mm-hmm. saw, maybe it was on Instagram. I think, I think it was on it. Instagram. Yeah. And this one's cool because there's, there's multiple copies of it. And my favorite one, I don't know where that book is, but basically um, you have the original text. Well, you have the original text in Chinese, then underneath is the English translation, and then you have kind of like over the centuries, the different commenters have kind of added flavor to it. Um, oh, neat. Which is really good. It's like, you know, so it'll say, by land, you know, by by the earth, Sun Tzu meant this, and like, right. they're kind of ruminating on it. Because the book itself is actually really short. Yep. It's not it's not a lot, but it's very pithy, if you will. It's very meaty. And, um, but having that extra commentary really helped. This one is a, it has a really cool, um, um, all right, now it's going to bother me. I can't find it, but, <laughs> but, um, what's really cool about this one is it's, it, it has this really fancy like binding and it looks like an old ancient, like Chinese book and stuff like very that. Very nice. Half of it's the original Chinese script and the half is the English translation. So very cool. it, it, lo- it looks cool. It was definitely a very Instagram, friendly book cover um <laughs> well you but, gotta um, think you know you mentioned it's short mm-hmm. and there's a, that's that's true of a lot of books that were written centuries ago especially before the gutenberg press and a lot of that is due to you know it was a lot of work you know it's like it's not like what you and i do today like when i write a book i start typing in a template you know in word but they had to go make paper first. I was going to say, like, there was no Staples <laughs> Office Depot, like, whatever. They couldn't go to Walmart yeah. and, you know, pick up that. So I think that I think that encouraged more of a pithy discipline. And I sure, think for us, sure. um, for us in the 21st century, I think they chose their words carefully, more carefully than we would today. Yep. In fact, today it's the opposite, right? What are kids taught in school? You need to write 300 words on this topic. Right. You know, and there was a meme going around, like, you know, in text message, you know, it was like, no, you wrote no. And then like, you know, in, a, in an email, you write, no, I can't. And then like, in and in a, in a, in a, in a, ultimately the, the punchline was at the end, it was like, unfortunately, at this time, due to circumstances, I find myself unable to perform <laughs> said activity. You know, <laughs> we're kind of becoming more wordy because the cost of is not there's no i don't know we're really deviating that's okay let's, let's take it back to data science uh, okay if you look here this is the the i really one thing i really do love about the folks that um um captivate i think the parent company is now rebel based media or something like that but yep. what's really cool is the they really feed my visualization guy you know mm-hmm. uh, my inner visualization geek um, so you'll see now they've added this thing where episode releases and you'll see we have a nice kind of up curve there. Yep. Yep. And Bob Ward, we had a pretty healthy up curve too. And let's see if we can go back. Let's go to all time, Andy. Let's see. Let's see how we What done. does it look like over time? Oh, wow. No, it won't. Okay. It won't let me overlay the episodes, but you'll see like over time, we did have some good spikes. Hmm. And um, we'll have some more. We're not done. More. I mean, if you look, you know, our best spike so far has been, you know, within the last 12 months. So, mm-hmm. yay, us. Yep. 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 But, um, so if you're, sorry, if you're, if you're not seeing this in the, in the podcast, we'll, we'll screenshot this and put it in the show notes. And cool. uh, big shout out to Andy because he does the show notes. I, I I learn so much when I do that because when we're doing the show, mm-hmm. I'm kind of in a different mode. Um, you know, I'm kind of in hangout mode and I'm not really thinking that much about it. And it's not that I'm not listening. It's that I'm listening differently. Um, no, no, back, there's different modes of attention too. Yeah. And when I go back and start going through the show notes, I'm pausing it and reflecting and looking up links and stuff like that. And, yeah, there was I, a, I listen to it and I, I, I hear it again too as I add yeah. it. So it's like we I think we make a good workflow team there, you know, like Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You know. 
So I like um, those fancy charts in the back. I know fancy charts. This is kind of like all time. Uh, obviously, you know, cool. so if you look, most of our downloads have been, uh, and we kind of see this from the fan email we get. We love fan email, by the way. Yep. Uh, we kind of see this in the fan emails that most of our audience is in the U.S. with the U.K. Uh, second. And um, most of our engaged listeners, though, I think are in the U.K., which is interesting. Yeah, really, I agree with that. It's got to be the British lady voiceover intro. That fits. Which, 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 you know, since we're kind of doing a three-year retrospective, I chose that intentionally for several reasons. One, I have a very New York, well, it's much more muted now, but I have a very New York kind of accent. Are you sure about that? Well, you don't have an accent at all, but. <laughs> Everybody else talks funny. You're right, Frank. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't want it to be too East Coast, so I wanted right. to kind of mellow it out. And I thought, you know, a generic American accent would just, I don't know, just. Uh, I, I and I this lady I think um, Shifty Pop on Fiverr she's awesome she does mostly kids work now but um, I thought that would add a nice kind of British you know posh type of aspect to it because what I think I don't know if a lot of uh, British folks know this but when when Americans hear a British accent immediately we assume that everybody is like super educated and super sophisticated whereas so, when people hear me speak. Right or me, you know, I'll be like, "Hey, you, because you guys over there, you want to, you know." I don't talk like that generally, but like, oh, when I'm yelling at my kids, I'm like, you know, right. you can't say that. Okay, right. <laughs> Every now and then, folks, if you if you don't know this, Frank will I I refer to it as Frank going Jersey. Frank going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've had him on speaker a couple of times. And I've had my one of my one or more of my kids in the car, and I'm like, uh, I didn't know, I didn't <laughs> and he know. didn't. It just be, but yeah, he and he he went on Jersey there. I went on Jersey pretty quick. I can kind of control it now. Yeah, um, it's but, all uh, good, though, Frank. I'm not judging, brother. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> just, and I, it makes me laugh actually. Um, it is know. pretty funny. We had a pretty it good. Is. We had a pretty good thing. Like uh, I think with your older son. Let's not say where he broke down. His car broke down. And I was like, and then I said something. And you're like, oh, my God, did he really say that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll do that. for the. We'll explain kind of this stuff in the four or five year retrospective. Um, yeah, we need a little more time. Or data driven, but- data driven after dark. Um, <laughs> um, no, but like. It's funny because when we first start, talked about doing the podcast, uh, we had originally said, let's do it for three years and see what happens. Let's commit yeah. to doing it for two, maybe three years. So I don't know. I'm game for doing another three. How about you? I'm up. I'm in. Oh, man. Cool, man. And if you want to help Spo, um, um, we, we do have that relationship with Audible. And, and, and it's, 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 just, it's a program to do for podcasters. It's not like a hangout with Jeff Bezos. Um, you know, although a college buddy of mine who, um, who, who was recently divorced, he's kind of like, he found out that, you know, you know, he, I think he's in his, in his dreams. I think, uh, Mackenzie Bezos is his next wife. I don't know. Hmm. But anyway, (laughs) I may edit that part out. Um, but it's not like, it's not like, let me start that over the whole thing so this is one of the advantages of the live feed you get uh, and when we always live stream to facebook live traditionally because it right. works great on the phone um wherever an idea strikes us uh but if you want to support the show uh go head over to audible uh check out any of the things we mentioned obstacles the way it, you go to the data driven book.com and you'll be routed to that and then basically you'll get a free auto free audible book if you're not already subscribed and um I can't recommend uh, anything by Grant Cardone enough. Yeah. Um, I just finished Inner Size by John Asaraf. Excellent book. Um, there's also the two books we talked about today, um, Never Split the Difference, uh, which is about uh, negotiations. And The Obstacle is the Way. And I forget who the author is on that one. But uh, that's also good. It's a good kind of introduction to stoicism. And... Um, but yeah, and we also have our T-shirts. 
which um, Amazon kind of shut that down um, because of the pandemic. They shut down all the t-shirts. Oh, right, right. It. So apparently they're going to they're going to reopen on July thirtieth. So okay, cool. Um, and um, yeah, so if you buy that, you get to wear a geeky shirt and you get to support the show. So and support us in the next three years. Plus, we have a couple other ideas that we've um, we've uh, we've been pondering. That's okay. I looked at my phone too because I was like, I don't. Know. My wife was messaging me, but um, <laughs> but yeah. So I think this is cool. I think what's really exciting about this is one it took us three years, but we finally have the platform and the setup that we originally envisioned. Yeah. But you know, with this fancy uh, schmancy thing here, we now have the ability to whiteboard, which is something I never envisioned. So keep going, keep pushing towards your dreams and your goals. Um, even it may take three years. I mean. The, 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 the origin story of the name Data Driven was from Black Friday in November of 2016. Uh, we didn't launch until essentially early June 2017. Or late May. Uh, late May, yeah. It was Memorial Day weekend. I think it yeah. was Memorial Day, yeah. So the last weekend in May. So it was... Um, when everyone was in front of their computers at home. Well, I, I intentionally kind of did the soft launch, but what was not intentional <laughs> was that it took us months to get this going. So, you know, um, it was well, really me kind of hacking away at the getting the video. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, we you needed know. to learn how to do this. And yes, you took the lead on, you know, how we would do this. And yes, we envisioned, as I because I remember having those conversations. Mm -hmm. We envisioned like in January um, when we got the, the URL, datadriven.tv, it's like, okay, datadriven.com was taken, grab datadriven.tv, and we said, we will do what you see on your screen today. Right. If you're watching. When I had enormous problems making it work reliably, <laughs> I props to you because you're like, dude, let's just do it. You know, and that was yeah. February. Let's just do what we can do. I, I do remember that. Yeah, let's just, we, we can do audio. Let's and then we audio. recorded an awesome three episodes, like back to back with um, we did Jen Underwood. Jen. Ben Underwood, yep. yeah. uh, Lynn Langett, and Nick Harris. Nick Harris, yeah. And, great, and, uh, great shows. They're still great shows. They are awesome shows. They are awesome shows. I'm, I was talking to Jen some time ago and about having her back on the show and kind of like, cool. it'd be cool. It'd be cool to get Lynn back too because she's up to some interesting stuff. And uh, she, Nick. Both of them are just constantly go, yeah. go, go, go. And um, so. Yeah, that's all I got, man. I think it's been an awesome ride. We we we've we've PO'd a lot of uh well not a lot, but we PO'd at least one published famous author guy. <laughs> um we're still hoping the court, uh, Nicholas uh Nassim Taleb. But we wanna we wanna do that carefully. We do I, I can live with being blocked by like a pseudo scientific self help guru on Twitter. But I wouldn't want to be blocked by Taleb. Well, you know, we could reach out to uh, to Chris Voss as well. I think that's a good name to add to that. Goal. Yeah, I mean, and, and here's the thing. So here's just something I'm doing on LinkedIn Live. So I'm probably going to stream live on LinkedIn Live later today. Okay. Um, where basically wish everybody at Microsoft a happy new year. July 1st is the Microsoft um, fiscal calendar. It is. And, um, but... Um, the um, kind of the thought I had on LinkedIn was kind of doing sessions for folks that are, it, I will eventually get to the lemons to learning summit. That's kind of been dropped because of some things going on in Frank's world. Um, but um, the, um, the idea is the, the best place I can reach and serve that mission. I kind of feel like I'm on is LinkedIn live streaming because the engagement I get there is through the roof. I mean, and, yeah. um, you know, so I want to help folks get into data science in a format that is more approachable. And mm -hmm. part of that is, you know, yesterday was, was more popular than I thought it did kind of like, you know, PowerPoint skills for data pros. And it was just like 20 minutes. And it's kind of like, you know, here's how you get around this. And then I know what you're thinking that, you know, I shouldn't, my skills alone should get me where I need to go. I shouldn't have to know how to present. Like, yeah, you might get where you're going, but the road will be a lot yeah. easier, you know, like. Absolutely. You know, 
So here's yeah. a story from my college days. Um, don't worry, it's PG. Um, <laughs> we went to um, we went to Montreal for spring break. Now you think spring break, everybody's going to Florida, but this was literally like the last 24 hours. We were like, let's go somewhere. I don't want to just stick around. Right. Well, where can we go? And I'm like, let's go to Montreal. Like, <laughs> And um, so all of our pictures from spring break, they apparently that year they had a big blizzard like the, the, the day or two before we got there. Oh. So our spring, I like the cold weather. So for me, it wasn't like a thing, okay. but like, but like all of our spring break photos, you know, were like us, like, you know, on top of like 20 foot snow mountains and stuff like that. And it, it was just funny. And then one of the things uh, that we did was we climbed uh, Mount Royale, which is kind of where mm -hmm. the city guy's name. And, um, but we didn't know there was an actual road up to it. So we climbed up like the side through the woods, ah. which the first two, th two thirds were fun, but the final third was like almost like it was like this, like 70 to 70 Good. 80 degrees. But at that point, we looked down and like, no, 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 no. At this point, we're like, we got to do it, got to do it. And, um, so the funny thing is, we finally climb over to the top of the mountain to a parking lot. And there was like this one thing where there were like thorns on some of the things I had to grab onto. So I cut myself. So my hands were like bloody. And, but at this point I had so much adrenaline in my system. I didn't care. And I was also much younger and uh, <laughs> uh, I would have been 21 or 22 at the time. And like my hands were all bloody and I think I may have even cut my face too, but I didn't care. Like I climbed it and I climbed over the, the little like um divider thing and then fell into the parking lot and then got up and was like yes right like I, like the ed Milet kind of yes right and right. then there were all these people just sitting there on the bench looking at me like i was insane so and then i realized oh if there's a parking lot there's got to be a road and if there's a road it's probably a trail so the moral of the story to connect it back in so we don't we'll meander too much is that if there's an easier way, think about taking it. <laughs> don't do what I did by climbing up the side of Mount Royale um, and not bother to look for a trail. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. It was fun. It's a memory I'll never have. I'll never forget. But like, you know, we going down, we took the, the trail because we found it. But you know, and I, I kind of did this on another LinkedIn live stream where I talk about how, how you know how many blogs I post per month, which is mm. well over 100 now for 18 months in a row. And I kind of said, you know, set yourself up for success, right? Like, don't. Yeah. Life's gonna throw stuff at you randomly, and you can get mad at that, but you can realize that's that's kind of just how things work, right? Entropy, right. Is that thing. Um, don't make things harder on yourself if you don't have to, because don't worry, the universe, the world, God whatever you believe in is going to do that, you know, on its own, right? Whether that's malicious or is it a way to make you grow? Again, that's the way you want to look at it. But, yeah. you know, in short, we are trying to impose order where entropy is a force and those two forces are always in conflict. So, sure. so don't Very make good. moral of the story is don't climb the side of the mountain. If there's a path. I like that story. I think I need to get more coffee so I can stay more focused. Coffee sounds awesome. <laughs> you know what I really want to get as a sponsor? Wake the hell up coffee. Yeah. Now I know. I saw. You, didn't I think I saw that on? I Instagram put it on Instagram, well. and I'm like, it's is that like a K cup? A, it's a K cup. Yeah, I know. I'm lazy. I'm not a true aficionado, but um, uh, honestly, honestly, like, and my wife before we bought the first Keurig machine, my wife was like, "Can't you just make coffee?" And I was like, "You don't understand. The first cup." <laughs> Needs to be like press. The first cup of coffee doesn't have to taste good. <laughs> it's like the opposite of wine. Like the second or exactly. third glass don't have to taste as good as the first one. Um, right. But um, you know, it's uh, uh, the first cup of coffee just has to have caffeine in it. <laughs> but yeah, wake the hell That's up. Coffee is really good. It's really flavorful, awesome. flavorful, um, and I'm trying to not have cream or sugar or, or any sweetener in my coffee because it helps with gotcha. my weight loss and Good. Uh, stuff like that. So, which I'm down like 52 pounds. So 
Yay me. Congratulations, Frank. That's awesome. I found some of the weight you lost. <laughs> I have quite the, uh, I'm calling it my pandemic belly. I think but, a lot uh, of people are going to have that. Actually, that's actually a good point. I should probably talk to um, uh, the doctor I went to, Dr. Tro, uh, hmm. who was a weight loss doctor and kind of have him on the show and talk about, because again, we're not doctors. He is. Uh, but for me, having a continuous glucose monitor, I think I was telling you about this. I don't know if we mentioned this on the show, um, but a continuous glucose monitor is a kind of a, it, it's kind of a, well, it's not IoT because it's not directly connected to the internet. So, so if I call it IoT, someone will call me out on that. But <laughs> true. But it is a device that is NFC powered that you stick in your arm for two weeks at a time. And you scan it with your phone, um, and it will read your sugar levels uh, on demand or every five minutes. Hmm. And you can chart that using the app and using the website. So yeah. for me, it helped me identify when I was hungry, be more mindful of why I was hungry. Am I snacking mindlessly? But more importantly, see an immediate feedback of yes. what I was eating and how it was impacting my blood sugar. So for me, it turned weight loss into a data problem, right? I've yeah. always had some kind of issue with my weight for as long as I can remember. Yeah. But once I kind of saw the data and I saw it real, I mean, real as numbers on a chart can be, yeah. um, it made it more manageable and more understandable and less hocus pocus because when it comes to weight loss everybody and their brother and their cousin and their dog has an opinion about how things should be done sure yet you look around obesity is an, uh, an epidemic so opinions are like elbows <laughs> everybody has one or two uh, but for yeah, me yeah. putting the data onto it and actually doing experimentation in science like for instance i saw that you know i would eat fried mozzarella sticks and fried chicken, right? Mm. Because it's mostly meat. It's not going to affect my blood sugar. So first day I had the CGM on, I had Caesar salad. No, no, it was grilled chicken. It was chicken salad with bacon and fried chicken. And I'm like, mm. oh, I'm being healthy. I'm being healthy. And then, boom, I saw what my blood sugar did. And I was like, oh. So that breading really does kind of add up. Plus the oils it's in too, apparently factor. Sure. So once I saw that, I'm like, you know, and and it's interesting. I I go now and I see, um, foods that used to tempt me. Mm -hmm. They don't tempt me, but there was a time when they did tempt me. But I'm like, oh god, that's gonna spike my sugar. And you also yeah. get like when your when your sugar's going up, man, you feel awesome. Like it's like, woo, it's the crash that hurts. <laughs> yes. So it's kind of like it becomes like this um, bit like reinforcement learning, if you will. You know, the 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 upside um, is fun, but the downside it becomes like you know mozzarella sticks were a big kind of thing for me, and I would eat them back when Wegmans had the open buffet. Yes, like I'd buy like just fill like one of those things with it and be like, yeah, I'm eating, I'm eating, I'm eating low carb. And um, then I see what my blood sugar did, and I was like, I have not had one since. Now, part of that is helped by the fact that they've closed their open food buffet because of the pandemic. True, sure, true. Sure. But there have been times when I was, like, really hungry, and I stopped. I'm not going to lie. I stopped, and I kind of did what I did with, the, with that other guy's protein shakes and bars. I'm like, no. <laughs> Let me tell you, from someone who's, who's been trying to lose weight for a while, a, yeah. a version works a lot better than willpower. Yeah, yes. You know, it's the carrot and the stick. It's not either or. And right. the other thing that's cool about this is um, I guess this is a true proper retrospective because we're meandering like we usually do because we had no set topic. We were just get testing this thing out for five minutes <laughs> before your call, and here we are uh, <laughs> sometime later. Um, but uh, the part of this is 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 the instant feedback because by the time weight is a lagging indicator right you can eat 
you know, chicken salad or chicken and just salad and just really be good on your diet for a week or two before mm -hmm. you would see any progress on the scale. Right. If you see progress at all. And that's very demoralizing. I mean, I, it is. I yeah. Kind of the obvious, but for me, you feel like you're getting away with it. Right. I mean, you, you're eating what you want. Right. It's right. Not, it's, not, it's not impacting you because you're right. not measuring the right thing. But this adds more of a real time component because your sugar mm -hmm. responds within 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, I guess technically speaking, that's not real time, but 20 minutes versus a few weeks. That's that's a quantum leap forward near real time. It's near it's, you know, I'm sure at some point there's going to be another one because one of the debates now in the, the low carb kind of keto world is, um, you know, I drink too much uh, uh, Dr. Pepper. Um, one of the debates now is, you know, does the artificial sweeteners raise your insulin, which may not raise your blood sugar because there's no sugar there, but does it trick that? And then so there, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of debate about that. So, you know, one day maybe when there'll be like a CGM, but, you know, uh, for insulin um, yeah. that, that, you know, that would be another thing, too. But, you know, so. It adds a more of a real time component because I, you know, and I would eat stuff that I wasn't sure about, and I would do it, you know, with a with a, with a twinkle in my eye. It's for science, you know. Um, but to be fair, if I did find something really did spike my blood sugar, I wouldn't have it again. Right. So, um, you know, I've mostly been been good. <laughs> That's awesome. Brother. All right. So with that, I think we're actually going to end the show. Um, hopefully, if all has gone well, you're listening to this on um, our podcast feed. Uh, and this all worked the way it's supposed to. And um, you have a great day. Any parting words of wisdom on this three years or so of podcasting? I know, Frank, I, I, it's just been great. And I appreciate you taking me along for the ride. Dude, I couldn't imagine a road without you, man. We were a good balance in a lot of ways. We've got a, a lot of good yang, got a good yang, because you know, part of the part thought I had was when I started the podcast, when I not when I started, but when I had the first ideation of it at yeah. Dunkin' Donuts. Right, right. Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, at so if you're in Maryland or in the DC area, it's the Dunkin' Donuts at the corner of Quince Orchard and um, Donnerstown Road. Um, behind the gas station and McDonald's, a real luxurious place, if you will. Um, but um, no, and it was just like you know, I, as I kind of dwelled on the idea, I didn't think I didn't approach you until like December. So like I kind of ruminated on a week or two, yeah. like if I want to do a podcast, what what would it be? And you know, I didn't want it. You added more of the data engineering kind of panache and credibility than than I had, which I would have been in data science side. So I think I think we're a good team for multiple levels. I, I think we're a great team, Frank. And I uh and I love working with you, brother. Likewise, man. Well cool. You have a great afternoon. Well, who knows when you're listening to this, but whatever remainder of the day it is, I hope you have a good one. And we look forward to helping folks and um providing you with good education and entertainment and silly jokes and ridiculousness and meandering stories for the next three years. At least. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. I'm going to try to shut this off and we'll see what happens.